Now let's move on to animating the content reveal. We will use this animation on almost all elements on the page. We are going to add this in two different ways. One is when the page loads. We'll use it for the contents in the header of the page that will become visible when the page loads. The second is displaying the content when it scrolls into view. The animation will be the same in both cases, but the way the interaction is set will be different. Let's start from the top. Select the main page heading. In the interaction panels, add the interactions action. Set the trigger to page load, page fully loaded. Leave the target blank. Set the animation to fading entrances, fade in up. Refresh the page and check how it works. You should get the reveal effect on the heading as the page load is complete. Now let's do the same for the other header text and the button. Instead of doing the same thing, we can just copy and paste the interactions. In order to do that, hover over the interactions panel and on the top right, you'll find a copy button beside the delete button. Click the copy button to copy the interaction to the clipboard. Next, select the P element below the heading. Press Command V on a Mac or Control V on Windows, and the interaction should appear in the top part of the interactions panel. We can do the same for the button. Select the button and press Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows. Now refresh the page. The reveal effect works on all three elements but they are appearing at the same time. Let's change that and give a little gap between each reveal effect. One way to do that is to just add the delay to the animations. To do that, select the text P element below the heading. In the interactions settings, click on advanced options, set the delay field to 0.3. Do the same for the button as well, but enter 0.6 for the delay. But the animations don't work properly yet. The reveal effect takes the element from hidden to a visible state. So to apply the reveal effect, we need to make sure the element is hidden when the page loads. We do that by adding the hide at start action to the revealed elements. Hide at start will ensure that the element is hidden when the page loads, and it will only hide the element if JavaScript is enabled. That ensures that our page remains usable in the case that the browser can't run animations. We have to add this to all three elements, and we can do this at the same time by selecting all three elements. To select multiple elements, press Shift on your keyboard and click on the elements that you want to select. If you want to select elements in different sections, then press Control or Command on a Mac and click on the elements one by one. Now with the three elements selected, click on Hide at Start action in the Interactions list. This will add the action to all of the selected elements. Refresh and check your page. You should see that those three different pieces of content are being revealed one by one. However, there's a slight problem with the button. It's not animated properly. The reason for this is that the element already has a CSS transition applied to it. That will clash with our animation. Our button element contains a BTN bootstrap class that includes a property for CSS transition. If you check the CSS, you'll find it. In such cases, we can customize the animation to make sure that we override any existing transition settings. Click on Edit Animation, and in the Timeline Editor, click on the purple Set Transition. Click on Add Property, then click on Custom Property, and type Transition. Then click OK. Set the value for Transition to None and save. Refresh the page. The content is now revealed smoothly as expected.